Hi there, my name is Mr. Mal and Higher Physics is my business. And in this YouTube live stream tonight, I'll be taking a look at questions one to five from the 2016 Higher Physics paper. We'll go over the questions, I'll show you how to do them, give you some exam, exam hints. You can go back and look at them at your leisure. So let's begin with our first question. It's question one, and it's all about a car accelerating uniformly from rest. The car travels a distance of 60 metres in 6 seconds. The acceleration of the car is what? Now, first thing we have to do is put down our list, our UVAST list. So here it is coming here, UVAST. This should be the first thing you should write down. What does UVAST mean? U is the initial velocity, V is the final velocity, A is acceleration, S is displacement, and T is the time. They're all vectors with the exception of time. Now, all we have to do is populate that list by putting in all the facts that we know. The car starts to accelerate from rest, so right away the initial velocity must be equal to zero meters per second. The car travels a distance of 60 metres in 60 seconds. So it's got a displacement of 60 metres and it does that in a time of 6 seconds. And we're asked to find the acceleration which must go down as well. Now, you go to your relationship sheet and you search for the kinematic equations like that. But I'll give you an exam hint. Try and learn them. Try and learn these off by heart so you can write them down right away, then check your relationship sheet and fill in the equation which you want to use. Let's see which one we'll have to use in this situation. We need to have U, we need to have acceleration, because that's what we're looking for. We have got displacement S and we've got time T. So we're looking for the equation with U, A, S and T. And it looks like this one here. Let's take a long one. So mark that down in your notebook and your paper. The displacement S equals UT plus one half AT squared. Now before we put any numbers in, it's better to rearrange them. Because we know a very important fact. We have to try and get that A out of there. And to get that A out of there, we have to do some algebraic manipulation. Sounds painful, but not if you practice. And these steps I want you to practice. We know that the car is moving off from rest, u equals zero, so our kinematic equation becomes s equals one half at squared because u will be zero and that will disappear. We've still got to find the acceleration and that's locked in here, but it's easily unlocked. To rearrange, we get rid of the half by multiplying this by 2s, by 2 sorry, to give us 2s, and that gives us at squared. And therefore 2s, 2 times the displacement, divided by times squared, will give you the value for the acceleration. So rehearse those moves, practice them, so you can find any of these particular quantities, given you know that s equals a half at squared. All we have to do now is put in our numbers. So acceleration in this case has got to be twice the distance. It's going to be 2 times 60 metres. Put that in a bracket and divide by the time squared. If the time is 6, it's got to be 6 squared. Plug that into your calculator and you get an answer of 3.3 metres per second every second. We've worked out the acceleration. Key points. Your UVAS list. Make sure you put that down first. Don't attempt any of these kinematic equations without your vast list. And get to know your kinematic equations. And also, finally, get to know how to manipulate or rearrange the quantities that you're asked to find. Good question to start off with. Question two is a velocity time graph. You'll always be asked a velocity time graph in the, in the higher. And in order to suss out what's happening here, let's see what the question's asking. A ball is thrown vertically upwards and falls back to the earth. Now, let's push this little slide away here to reveal a simulation computer. So we've got a ball, and we're going to chart its graph with some sort of motion sensor. 
is the height it goes to and let's see what graph we get when we start it off yeah there you go play that again ball thrown in the air and you can see what's going to happen as the ball leaves the person's hand it leaves with a velocity and that velocity is going to be reduced over time due to the acceleration of gravity and that's the velocity decreasing once it gets to its maximum height its velocity will be zero its vertical velocity will be zero and then it starts its downward journey and because it's going downwards it's going the opposite direction from upwards therefore the vector velocity the, the velocity vector changes and it's pointing downwards now so you get a negative velocity so that's the graph we're looking for one that starts high its velocity is reduced and then its velocity increases as it comes down but in the opposite direction and from our list of list of graphs it looks like it's going to be number A and that's the standard graph for an object being thrown into the air now another important sign, another important physics uh, hint to have is if I drag the wee man out here once the ball is in the air, it has only one acceleration acting on it, and that's acceleration of gravity. So you're looking for just the one line, the one slope. This one here has got two slopes, two accelerations. It's not that. Two accelerations and two accelerations. And this one is obviously increasing velocity in the upward direction, positive direction, so we ignore that as well. So look for the straight line, which stands for the acceleration of gravity which will be minus 9.8 meters per second per second. Good question to study. Question 3 is about a slope, a package on a slope. Let's see what it's about. A block of wood slides with a constant velocity down a slope. The slope makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal as shown. The mass of the block is 2 kilograms. And we have asked to find the magnitude of the force of friction acting on the block. Okay, let's get our hints and equations. We drag out our equation and we can see this little slide here. The force of gravity acting down on a slope will give you this force here, the force parallel to the slope, and it'll be of a value of mg sine of theta. The mass times the gravity, the weight of the object, multiplied by sine of the angle. Now in this particular case here, the package is not accelerating, therefore there should be no imbalanced force here. So this force must be balanced with the force of friction acting in the opposite direction. So there's a force of friction acting in the opposite direction if we complete a force time graph. So that will be a force of friction. Because the two forces are balanced, because it's constant velocity, we can say that the force of friction acting on the block must be exactly equal to the force acting down the slope which must be equal to according to the equation mg sine of theta so we'll put in the numbers mass is going to be 2 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by sine of 30 degrees now a good wee hint for you is that sine of 30 degrees is always equal to a half so it makes the calculation easier for us and we can go straight away and say that the force of friction equals 2 times 9.8 times a half and we're going to have 2.0 times 9.8 times a half a half times a 2 gives us 1 so we're left with a force of friction of 9.8 newtons acting up the slope key things here know the equation of the force acting down the slope, past the slope, it's mg sine theta. And if it's going to be a constant velocity, you know fine well that the two forces must be balanced, the force acting down the slope must be balanced by the friction force acting upwards. And that's where we get this from, and we can get the force of friction. Good question. Question number four, the graph shows the force which acts on an object over a time interval of eight seconds. It's a force time graph. So right away we should know that a force time graph, the area of a force time graph is going to give us either the change of momentum or the impulse. 
So it's the area of this graph which gives us that, and our big clue, which we have to learn, an exam hint, is this one here. The area of a force time graph is the impulse given, which also equals the change of momentum. Remember, a change of momentum will not occur without an impulse. An impulse will not occur without a change of momentum. In many ways, it's like the horse in the carriage. You can't have one without the other. So we work out the area of this graph here. It really is the impulse and it really is the change of momentum. We're asked to find the change of momentum or the momentum gained by the object in eight seconds. So let's cut the graph up to work out the area. We can change it into a little rectangle here. So we've got a rectangle, rectangle and a triangle. This one's easy to find. 4 times 4 is 16. This one here is 4 up to 8, which is 4 along, 4 up, which is 16 as well. Be careful when it comes to the triangle. The triangle height is from 4 up to 10, which is going to give us 6. The width of the triangle is 4, so the area is going to be 4, 6 is 24, half it is going to give us 12. So if we add up all the areas, it should give us the numerical value of the change of momentum and also the impulse. So 16 and 16 is 32. 16 and 16 equals 32, plus you're adding on 12, and the answer is going to be a numerical value of 44. So therefore the momentum gained, momentum gain is going to be 44 kilograms per meter squared. Key point, force time graph. Area of a force time graph is the impulse, which is also equals the change of momentum. Think of the horse and the carriage. Can't have one without the other. Work out the numerical value of the of the area and equate that to change of momentum, uh, kilogram meters per second, or if you're asked an impulse, the impulse will be 44, but the units change to newtons seconds. Our final question for this live stream tonight is a planet orbits a star at a distance of 3 times 10 to the power 9 metres. The star exerts a gravitational force on the planet and the mass of the star is that. You're asked to find the mass of the planet. Now, the equation for that, the equation which is the force of gravitational attraction between two bodies separated by distance r, and one body is a mass m and the other body is mass small m. In the uh, data book you will get uh, this equation here which is the same one, f equals g will not be m1 m2 over r squared but if you stick to this one you know fine well you can easily manipulate it because you've got a big m and small m which makes it easier on the eye. So what we've got to find, the mass of the planet, so we're after the mass of the planet here. So we mark out the equation, F equals G, big M, small m, over R squared. Practice this, F times R squared equals G, big M, over small m. We want to find the mass of the planet, small m, which is here. So another bit of algebra manoeuvring, f times r squared divided by g times m. And that should give us the size of the planet's mass. Okay, we plug in the numbers. Uh, the mass of the planet then is going to be equal to the force of attraction, the gravitational force of attraction between them, 1.6 times 10 to the power 27, multiplied by the radius between the two centres, uh, of the planet, the distance between them, the planet and the star, which is 3 times 10 to the power 9, so 3.0 times 10 to the power 9. Now, don't forget to square that. That's a very important hint. Don't forget to square it. What is the value of G? G will be the data book. It's the universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to minus 11, and a whole lot of units after it. Just remember the value of it. So 6.67 times 10 to minus 11, and you're multiplying that by the mass of the star, which is 6.0 times 10 to the power 30. 
Now if you get a Casio calculator, this should be a walk in the park, but invariably it's not because we make mistakes with calculators and calculating them pressing buttons. So take your time, plug in the numbers, make sure you square it, do the calculation not once, but do it twice, and you'll find out that the answer in this particular case is equal to 3.6 times 10 to the power 25, and the answer will be in kilograms. So, I hope you have enjoyed uh, this show tonight. I hope you have uh, taken in a good bit of information. I hope that you have enjoyed it. And there'll be more coming up. This is a trial one. If you want more, you can give me a little bit of uh, information if you want to continue or to give me some hints or some of the questions you want to do. So all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching and we'll meet up again for another live stream, past paper, live stream class.